New Redeemed Church, place where miracles happen, souls are saved, and lives are turned around every day. Come on.
So I thought we redeemed the Trinity. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I feel like giving you a little bit of praise. Younger, 
he took me to a block party. Mm. <laughs> Don't change. I went to the block party, amen. When I went to the block party, they was dancing, Pastor Todd Dunbar, and they was getting it in. And I didn't know how to dance. I've been in church all my life. My brother slipped out of church and went back to church, so he knew how to dance. And I stayed in church, amen, and I didn't know how to dance. So, but he put me out there on that floor. This is before I met Darlene. And I'm out there on the floor, and I didn't know what to do. And I remember Johnny Tavolcha. <laughs> Saturday Night Live. And for some reason, Elder Brown, I thought this was cool. <laughs> That's all I knew how to do. And my brother stopped dancing, and I realized, I thought I was getting it in, the deacon. I thought I was doing pretty good. I looked around, everybody stopped dancing. And my brother said, what is you doing? I said, okay, that ain't gonna work. I started something else. They really stopped dancing. My brother said, you shopping. You ain't dancing. Don't get that on the way home. One thing I knew how to do was shout. And so I was in the street shouting. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And so I don't know all these other dances. So when I need to dance, y'all, y'all excuse me, but I need to dance. And this ain't nothing like praising God. Can you say amen? Now, I'm not going to worry you tonight. I'm going to dance a little bit. This great man of God. Amen. To this great man of God. Amen. Pastor Dr. Wayne and his wife. For their years. No, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for these years of service. And I would like to present to him. Amen. This certificate. A ministerial achievement for his 12 years, him and his wife, 12 years of ministry. Something to hit on the wall. I bless you. Touch your neighbor, tell him it's nice to be nice. I never go to a party empty handed. Listen, all right, from the Word of God, y'all ready? Got your Bibles? Amen, amen, amen. In the book of Luke and the 22nd chapter and the 31st to the 33rd verse, there is a word from God. Thank God for the remnant of New Redeemed Church. Make some noise, New Redeemed. They ain't saying nothing at all that chicken, Pastor Todd. They ain't saying nothing. Amen. The remnant of New Redeemed Church that came with me on this morning, the overseer, our Pastor Brown, to all of you, to my grandchildren that are here. Amen who's going to help me shout. I taught my grandchildren how to shout. And I'll be home and they'll be grabbing me, put the shout music on, talk, come on, pop, pop. Yeah. Let's get it in. And I shout much as I can. When I sit back down, no, 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 pop, pop, get back up. <laughs> amen. To get me ready for church. Somebody say amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads on this wise, and this is the intelligence that the Lord would give us on this day. Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 33rd through the 30. 31st through the 33rd verse. I'm trying to get all of this out the way. Elder Darrell, uh, Elder Nate, Pastor Nathaniel Brown, Elder Darrell Brown, to all the Browns, amen to the hymns, to all of you, Pastor uh, Todd Dunbar, to everyone in their rightful and respected places, to the musicians. Praise God for these musicians. Yeah. I hear a lot of preachers saying, I don't need no music. Well, I need some music. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the word of the Lord says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, somebody say behold. behold, the word behold means to look, take notice, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, listen, semicolon, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee. I'll go with you in prison and to death. Somebody say, oh God. I'm going to need some music on this text. I need you to help me tonight. Amen. Look at your neighbor. If you don't want to touch your neighbor, that's your business. But look at your neighbor. If you don't want to look at him, you should have sat next to him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your ex wants you back. Anniversary to this man and this woman of God who has been celebrated and, and, and 
been working in this part of the vineyard for 12 long years. Yeah. The number 12 is a very important, uh, potent, and powerful number. Number 12 appears in the Bible about 187 times and is often used, amen, to represent governing authority. Number 12 is also the number of perfection. Can you say amen? amen? In the Hebrew tongue, the number 12 signifies perfect government, such as divine order. We have from the number 12, the 12 tribes of Israel ordained 24 priestly divisions and 12 gates of the city in Revelation. And so we say to you today, this number 12 is your number of new government. Somebody say amen. amen. It's your number of new order. It's your number of new construction. After the number 12, God starts something new. Uh, you should have caught that. Uh, I, let, I got to warn y'all, I forgot to warn y'all, that I'm not just a preacher, I'm also a prophet. So I'm going to preach a little bit and prophesy a little bit. You can put them together and call it preacher fire. Okay, amen. Clap your hands, give them a praise. I got to get out of here, amen. Listen, uh, your ex wants you back. Your ex wants you back. Anybody got any exes out there? Don't lift your hand too high. They might be in the church. Amen. Your ex wants you back. Amen. It's interesting to me, uh, Pastor, uh, that, amen, how people don't really miss a good thing until that good thing is gone. Mama used to always say you never miss the water until the well run dry. Somebody say amen. We all can testify that we've had some stuff and we've allowed some stuff to get away from us. Stuff we wish we had right now. Somebody say amen. There are a lot of exes, amen, out here today, even in this church, even in this congregation. If you would survey this congregation and take a panoramic view, you would see some people got a lot of exes. Somebody say amen. And with these exes, they don't realize that a lot of them exes want you back. The Bible says, and this is where we're taking our text from, he says, Satan had desired to have you. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so Satan misses what he had and he wants it back. Well, uh, when you think about exes, and I'm almost out of my introduction, when you think about exes and your ex wants you back, a couple of things uh, came to my mind. I began to reminisce on some things. Uh, uh, Gary Player wrote a song that says, uh, Baby, come back to me. Uh, you can blame it all on me. I was wrong and I just can't live uh, without you. Act like you don't know the song. The Sides wrote a song that says, uh, I look for her everywhere I go. You, you ain't got to help me finish it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen her? Uh, the other songwriter wrote a song that says, I see her face everywhere I go. On the street and even in the picture show. Have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? I heard her voice as the clouds wind blow. In the sweet music on the radio. Have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? Where? She had to leave and go away. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. Then he said, I've been used to having someone to lean on, and I'm lost, baby. I'm lost. Amen. Ah, there's somebody that wants their ex back. The OJs wrote a song that says, She used to be my girl. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. Uh -huh. Pleasure P wrote a song that says, Letters to my ex. Uh, Jonas, he wrote a song that says, I'm for you. Tank wrote a song that says, can't make you love me, but I want to. Tyrese wrote a song that says, I miss my girl. Uh -huh. Usher wrote a song that says, I've been fooling around. Mario wrote a song that says, I'm thinking about you. Bruno Mars wrote a song that says, if I, if I was your man, you know, they won't talk to me. Trey Song wrote a song and said, we can't just be friends. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody else. 
with husband and somebody else's wife. I'm moving on. Uh, Y'all getting quiet now. Where you get that feature from? Y'all getting quiet now. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold the music. I, I want them to hear this. Uh, I'm getting ready to shut it down the other side. Uh, you better love on your husband and your wife. I got a problem, preachers, with people that are kissing. a little bit. Uh, 
stop. Listen, I'm done, y'all about to go. Y'all thought I was gonna preach all day. I got to take my grandbabies out. Papa promised to feed them, and they're watching the clock. Listen, y'all, God told me to tell you today that the devil wants you, but God got you.
You know it's a hot service when somebody holler out higher. Higher. Yeah. I get three people to shout higher. Shouting loud enough. Three more people shout higher. higher. I got to go. While we're standing, put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder, everybody. Connect. Come on, ain't no COVID in the shoulder. Stop your nonsense. Church, get in folk. Church, church folk, get in church and act stupid. I wish that preacher would stop saying touch your neighbor. I, I ain't trying to get no corona. You got coronas in your refrigerator. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. I ain't touching nobody. You walking around with hand sanitizer, putting all that stuff on your hand, wiping your face with it, putting it in your mouth. Baby, if you ain't covered by the blood of Jesus, you ain't covered by me. Hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this church, these churches that have mingled together and become one church today. There's no new redeemed, no holy trinity. We are the people of God in the house of God. And we stand together unified for one purpose. That you would bless this man and this woman of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak into their destiny right now. That the half has not been told. That you're not finishing, you're just getting started. Uh, uh, that's my spiritual Tourette's kicking in, and I'm sorry. See where you're taking it. Here's another level. Everybody point your hands toward pastor and first lady. Let everybody else go. Just point your hand toward the pastor and first lady. Pastor, this is a new season. And in this season, it's a season of uncertainty. Because you're in a season where the people you used to can depend on, you can't depend on right now. You're in a season where you used to be able to say, do this and do that, but now you don't know who's doing what. But God told me to tell you, it's an adjustment season. Because you're coming into your 12th year. You just want the day start the beginning of your new government. I wish I had half my church here. I ain't got time to prophesy to you. Is it all right I prophesy to him? And in this season, I speak healing to your body. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I need a bottle of water real quick. I'm done. I'm not mystical. I need a bottle of water. Fresh water, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, the top back on. Thank you. I'm not gonna drink it. First lady, this water is for you. I do things that don't make sense to other people, but that's okay because when God tells you to do something, yeah. it's not supposed to make sense. Yeah, right. He told one prophet to get butt naked and walk run through the streets. Thank God he didn't tell me that. <laughs> Just to show Israel they're naked before him. He told another preacher to eat cow dung. Just to tell Israel how they taste in his mouth. Y'all ain't talking to me. Sometimes God will tell you to do some strange stuff. He ain't tell me to do none of that, thank God. But the Lord told me to get this bottle of water. I was just standing right here. The Lord spoke to me as clear as day. I said, tell him to give you this bottle of water. And here's the instruction that goes along with the prophecy. You're going to drink that bottle of water in one shot. Not right now. Because this is not for them. This is for you. In the privacy of your own house, I want you to drink that whole bottle of water. You hear what I'm saying? And God said, I'm going to flush everything out of your system. I don't know about you, he can't run out. She can't run out. Say, listen, listen. I don't got time to play with God. I was in Chicago preaching a revival. And a man had a foot that was shorter than the other. And we finished praying. His foot grew. Y'all ain't talking to me here. I went to Temple University. One of my deacons had an aneurysm. Brother Gregory, Brenda's husband, had an aneurysm. I walked up in the hospital, the Chinese doctor walked out and told his wife, Sister Brenda, his aunt, 
said it's over. He's going to be accessible for the rest of his life. I closed the door, went inside, closed the door, and when I came back out, he came right out of that coma. Is there anybody here that believes in the power of prayer? Look at your leader.
in the power of deliverance. I want you to give God 60 seconds of praise.
to the next chorus. I got that chorus. I felt somewhere between the keys. The other one. They probably can't find me on the keys, but I'm in the middle. I'm somewhere between the keys. They can't find me in E flat or F sharp or C major. I might be in A, B, C, D, E, F. I don't know, but I'm somewhere on the chart. If you're not saved tonight, everyone stand up and stand, please, everyone. Area. We're located at 1501 Germantown Avenue in the heart of Germantown, Philadelphia. Our services are every Sunday at 12 o'clock noon. Why don't you be our special guest? You can contact us by email at newredeemchurch at gmail.com. That's newredeemchurch at gmail.com. This is your friend, your brother, Apostle Young, saying I love you and nothing you can do about it. You know 